This video is to get you started a little bit in Clojure, and I'm using Clojure 1.2.1 in IDEA. Uh, I'm going to work this from scratch. I'm going to solve uh, a small problem that I already solved today, uh, but I'm going to do it um, ad lib. So I'm going to go into IDEA. I'm using IDEA 10.5. Community version. I've already got Lock Closure installed, the plugin. I've already changed the default closure jar that the closure uses to be closure 1.2.1. So I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call it uh, Granularity. I'm going to create a source directory. I'm going to add closure. I've downloaded closure 1.2.1 and that's what I want it to use. So I'll say use library create. I'll go to where I downloaded it. There we go. So now I have my new project. I'm going to start the REPL. And I may not need a file at all, but it'll probably be handy if I create one. So we'll call this granularity. And we'll call the namespace, create a namespace, granularity, just for kicks. So I want to find out what the um, granularity of uh, the system time is on my machine using uh, Java's uh, system nano time. And I was just curious earlier today um, uh, what the timing was. I had remembered that there was some kind of granularity issue where you can only get about 16 millisecond granularity on a timer. Or on, when you do a time call, if you did successive time calls, um, you wouldn't get exactly the time. You'd get some. You'd get the time uh, sort of modulo uh, 16 milliseconds. So how do we go about getting that? Well, first of all, we can run um, Java uh, functions uh, from the REPL. Uh, we can do use the dot operator and say dot and then a method name like nano time and we can say what to run it on so java.lang.system and again I'm going to do this ad hoc so I'm going to screw things up but that's okay that's how that's how my development works so we'll make sure that the cursor is at the end of the line and we'll hit enter and we'll see what we get uh, no nano time for class java lang class so what did we do wrong? Java Lang system. Well, I know I can run it another way if I do java.lang.system nano time. There we go. Why did it not work? when I called the method name. Oh, because the reason it didn't work is because this is not an object, this is a class. Um, so I would need um, somehow to have an instance of that. So we'll do it this way. We'll do Java Lang system nano time. Um, that works as well. This is a way to get access to static uh, fields of a class. So you can see that it gave us a nano time. And uh, we can, if we wanted to get that successive times, I figured out earlier today, um, there's several uh, calls you can do um, to get things to repeat. One of them, if you just have a value, you can call repeat. Um, another one is you can call repeatedly. So let's look up repeatedly, because I can never remember the order of things. So we'll call doc on repeatedly. Uh, pass it a function and the number of times you want to run it. So let's get the um, nano time uh, 10 times successively. So we'll do uh, repeatedly 10 times, and we'll do, let's see if we can do it with the function uh, macro. It's a reader macro. So let's do uh, java.lang.system nano time. So there we go. So we got a list of 10 successive nano times. Now I want to see what the uh, granularity is. What is the smallest, um, if I run them one after the other, uh, granularity that I get, and do I get um, the same granularity every time? 
and it doesn't look like we do because we're getting all sorts of different odd numbers, even numbers, whatever. But let's just see what the average um, granularity is. So we want to compare one value to the next value. So we'll subtract the value of the of a call from the value from the next call. So what was the time on the first one? Then what was the time on the next one? What was the difference between the two? Once we have the difference between all of them, this one and this one, and then this one and this one, and then this one and this one, we'll uh, take all the differences, we'll add them up, and we'll divide it by the number to get the average. So how do we do that? How do we get this value and this value and the, and uh, subtracted? And then how do we get this one and this one? Uh, a way to do that is with partition. So we can say, let's, let's just do doc partition to find out how that works. And if you read through this, you'll find that it's a way of uh, taking a, uh, a sequence and dividing it into subsequences. So let's just do partition, um, and we'll do range uh, 10, just to see what the default is. Uh, wrong number of arguments, pass to partition. So what did it require? It required a number and a collection. So we need to tell it how many uh, in each uh, partition we want. So let's say two. There we go. So it took uh, zero to nine and partitioned it in uh, subsequences of two. So that works for what we want, but we don't want this one and this one and then this one and this one. We want this one and this one and then this one and this one. So we want them to repeat. We want it the, each uh, partition to advance only by one. So the way we do that is I just hit up arrow to get the last statement I did we can do um, uh, how many steps we want to do. So we do the number we want in each uh, sub subsequence and the step that we want to step forward. So we'll do two, we'll step forward one, and when we do that, we get zero, one, one, two, two, three. So that's exactly what we want. So let's do that to what we had before. We'll do partition, uh, groups of two, stepping forward by one, and then we'll do repeatedly uh, 10 times, and we'll do java.lang.systemnano time. There we go. Uh, now what do we do? Oh, we didn't use the uh, reader macro to turn this into um, a function that we can pass to repeatedly. I don't think we can pass in, let's just try it just to double check. I don't think we can pass in a Java function because it doesn't um, implement uh, uh, the I function interface. So we're going we're gonna to make a, uh, a function out of it. We could, we could do this, which would be fine. Um, I was just using the shortcut reader macro for that. So there we go. We have our system times grouped into groups of two, and you can see they repeat. So we've got each group, uh, each time in two groups. Now we need to somehow get, um, and you can see it goes all the way over. We need to take those and we need to take each group and uh, subtract the first one from the second one. So how do we run uh, subtract on each of those groups with the group as um, the arguments to subtract? Well, to use each group as arguments to subtract, we can use apply. Apply allows us to uh, run a function like minus on a list of values, so two and one. As a, uh, if we don't do that, we just did apply minus, uh, if we just did, sorry, rather, uh, minus with a list two and one, uh, we need um, two arguments to, actually we only need one argument, or none actually, to minus, but we do need numbers, and that's not a number. So we need to unpack that list as the arguments, and that's where apply comes in. So we need to apply uh, minus to each of these groups, and how do we apply one function to a list of values? We use map. So if we use map to minus, and we had several lists that we want to use as, um, uh, um, several things that we wanted to use uh, on minus. Um, yeah, we won't go this route because it takes, it needs two, well, yeah, let's, okay. So in order to call, um, in order to call uh, map 
with uh, on minus with um, multiple parameters to minus, we need to do uh, a partial function uh, which already has um, uh, some of the uh, arguments supplied on apply with uh, subtract. So what that'll give us is a, a the, the apply function call with the first function already supplied, okay? And then we'll, we'll map that to a list of uh, different uh, parameters that we're going to pass to apply so that it'll unpack them and run them on, um, on the subtract function. So let's do 5 and 2. So when we run, uh, when we map this partial function over this list of values, which is a list of lists, each item in the outside list will be passed to this function. So two and one as a list, we pass to this partially apply, uh, partially uh, called um, apply function. So then apply will then be apply with the argument we've already passed in with partial, and then it'll get this argument. So it'll call apply, subtract to this list. Apply will unpack these arguments and call subtract with them. So you'll get subtract. Uh, uh, one from two. So let's try that. There we go. So we got two minus one is one, five minus two is three, and it map returns the resulting values in a list. Wow. So let's apply that to the time that we got, uh, our partition sub list of subsequences of times. So this is where you could start using putting these into. Um, into the file. So let's do that. Let's take what we've already done. Let's save these. And then we'll start working with it um, with map. So we'll take our map. We'll put that there. And instead of this list of values, we already have a function that is generating our list of values. So let's take that and put that in place of these. And we'll see if that works. And we can do Control Shift G to run that. So let's see what we get. So there we go. We've taken uh, our list of ten uh, nano time calls, the the uh, return values from that. We've partitioned them so that the first and second values, the second and third, the third and fourth are all in subsequences. So there's some repetition there, some redundancy. And then we've taken each group. So each um, uh, side-by-side -side value in that list, and we've applied uh, subtract to them. So the first one minus the second one is this. The second one minus the third one is this. The third one minus the fourth one is this. Now we've got that backwards, because we don't want the second minus the third, uh, or the first minus the second. We want the second one, which is later, minus the first one to get how much later the second one was, was than the first one. So we would need to take um, these uh, lists that we have, and we need to reverse them. So we can either go uh, through that list and reverse each subsequence, or when we go to apply those um, values, we can reverse them. So how do we do that? Well, I think we can take a function um, that, uh, let's take a copy of this as we continue working on it. We'll take, um, an anonymous function that we take it past a map, and before we uh, we don't actually don't need partial at this point because we're just going to create a function uh, instead of using apply and and subtract, we'll just create a function from scratch. So we'll say there's our function. Um, we're going to take in a list um, and we're going to reverse it and apply it to uh, subtract. So we'll do apply, subtract, and then reverse. And then since we're using the reader, uh, the function reader macro, um, any uh, percent uh, or percent one, and then percent two, percent three, uh, so on and so forth, will get automatically um, uh, handled in the argument list of this anonymous function that we're creating. So we're going to take this function, which takes uh, one argument, reverses it, and applies that to the subtract function, and we're going to call it for every resulting value we get in this list. Okay, So let's try that. Control Shift G. There we go. Now we get not the first one minus the second one, we get the second one minus the first one. The numbers are different because we just did another 10 calls to system time. Now we want to take that and we want to get the average uh, of all of these. So we need to add them all up 
and then subtract them by uh, the number of them. Now we know it's 10, but we don't want to have to put 10 in two different places. Uh, because if we change one and forget to change the other, it's not going to work out properly. If you do 20 time calls and we only divide by 10, we're not getting the average. Okay. So how do we uh, get the? How do we do that? So the question to ask yourself is, what is that? It's this list, uh, all mapped to subtract, get the resulting differences, and that'll give us a list. And then, uh, if we wanted that list totaled, we need to um, reduce that list or uh, we can call so there's two ways we can do that we can use reduce with the plus function or we can apply that list to plus I think reduce is cleaner so we'll do let's let's first of all look up what reduce does so we'll do doc reduce takes a function and a collection and I'll cheat here I know that it just takes the uh, if you don't supply a a start value, it'll take the first and second values in the list, it'll apply them to the function, take the result, apply that to the third, uh, and then take the result of those and apply it to the fourth, so on and so forth. So let's do reduce with plus this list of values. Okay, so let's do control shift G on that. So we added them all together and we got 46, 462,147. Now we need to get uh, divide the whole thing by 10. Now we could say uh, just divide and then put 10 at the end. But again, we have that 10 here and that 10 here. They're called magic numbers. And we don't want those. If we forget to change uh, one, uh, we change one and forget to change the other, that's not going to be good. So we need that in two different places. So uh, what we can do here is we can use let. We'll say let, and then we'll give it a list of things that we want to be let bound. And so we want uh, uh, num calls, we'll call it, for lack of a better name, and we'll call it 10. And then so we'll change this. We'll, the number of times we're going to call that is going to be num calls. And then the number that we divide by when we get that back is going to be num calls. Now this is a little bit of a departure from what I did earlier. Last time I had um, uh, let bound the result of this partition. Uh, this time I'm not doing that. So let's see if that works. So we get a ratio. And uh, you know what? You may know this better than I do, but what I did earlier is I just um, I just forced that to an int with the int call. That may not be right. Go ahead and tell me in the comments. I don't mind. So we'll do control shift G on that again. There we go. So we took 10 time calls uh, to nano time we partitioned them so that it was uh, the first and the second, the second and the third. We found the difference between each time call and its uh, subsequent time call or succeeding time call. And once we got the all 10 differences, we added those up and we divided them by um, the number of calls that we did. So we could quite easily turn this into a function. <clears throat> We would simply, let's just copy it and paste it so we don't lose what we had before. I will say, first of all, let's just call this, uh, uh, let's call it nano time granularity. And we'll put in uh, some documentation um, calls uh, java.lang.system uh, nano time there you go and we just want the number of times ah, we'll just call it yeah we'll call it Let's call it repetitions. And take that off the end, put it there, and we can replace. We don't need to let by number of calls because we've already bound it in our uh, argument list. So we can take this let out and replace num calls with repetitions. And take that 
that out. So now what we have, this maps to the beginning. And if we move one over, this maps to int. So there we go. Let's do this. So Control Shift G will run this. And we can see that it didn't actually run the code. It actually ran the, the def, uh, def function macro to define a function. And here's the, uh, the code that it's going to run. And here is now I have user in my user namespace. I have nano time granularity. So let's try that. Let's do let's do nano time granularity with a hundred calls. And there we go. We call nano time a hundred times in rapid succession. The difference between each call averaged out is going to be thirty-three thousand seven hundred thirty-three nano um, seconds, and each one is a million. Uh, there's a million nanoseconds in each uh, millisecond, so here we have 0 0.033733. So 0 0.03 roughly of a millisecond is how fast we can call these, and uh, that gives us an impression of what the granularity is, um, uh, because each one uh, uh, was different by this much. We know the granularity gets down to a, a fairly granular uh, level. So there you go. That was uh, that was me being open and honest in how I would develop something like that, uh, uh, just to give you a, a feeling for how somebody else is doing it. Maybe this gives you the feeling that great, you're way ahead of the curve, you're doing it way better. Uh, maybe this just gives you uh, a few tips and tricks. Um, either way, that's great. Uh, the more documentation uh, examples we can get out there on developing with closure and closure and idea the better. So there you go. That is developing a function that tells you the granularity of successive uh, nano time calls. Uh, before I sign off, the one final thing, the granularity that I was talking about with 16 milliseconds is when you call Java system um, uh, time millis or something, or system time millis. That'll give you uh, times that always uh, are uh, t the time modulo 16 milliseconds. So if that's not granular enough, you can use nano time, which incidentally is also what the time macro in Clojure uses as well. It'll use system nano time. Uh, we can see that if we do, uh, actually we'll do it down here, if we do macro expand one on the time, um, let's do um, time and again, I'm doing this by memory. Uh, let's just do uh, plus one one. So there we go. If we look at that, we can see it's doing a let binding. It's binding this uh, var name to Java system. Oh, here we go. There's that method call that I was looking for earlier. Uh, dot, then a class name, and then a method name. Um, I don't know why it did closure core nano time. That's interesting. Uh, so it bound the time uh, to this variable, and then it runs the code that I wanted, binds the value to this variable, so it has the time and the resulting value of before uh, it called my code, then the value of my code, the result. Once it's done that, now we're in the let um, uh, s expression, or let, uh, the let block, and it's going to call uh, print with the elapsed time, and it'll divide... Um, It'll take, it'll subtract the new time now that it's run my function from the old time. It'll divide that by a million, and that'll be milliseconds, and it prints that up to the screen and then returns me my value. So if I do time plus one one, I'll get that many milliseconds, which is actually done with nanotime. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that was helpful.